Hello guys, Gabriel here once again. Today I'm going to talk to you about something really, really special. It's the brand new BMW M140i. Now this car comes along to replace the previous M135i, which received brilliant reviews. Most of the, those reviews were due to the BMW N55 engine, the 3 liter uh, unit that powered it, this car's predecessor. That unit is still in, uh, in production today, but it's going to be soon replaced by the engine this car is using. It's the brand new B58 3 liter engine, and I have to say uh, it is a worthy success successor to the N55. Compared to its predecessor, this new engine has 340 horsepower on the uh, M Performance models and uh, 500 Newton meters of torque. That's uh, 369 pound feet of torque. So, in terms of performance figures, it's better than the car it replaces. The old N55 engine had 326 horsepower and up to 450 Newton meters of torque. Now, this new engine. Uh, puts the M140i and M240i within hitting range of the BMW M2. Now the BMW M2 has a highly reworked N55 engine that delivers 370 horsepower, so more horsepower, but less torque. The M2 actually can reach 500 newton meters of torque due to overboost, but only for short uh, periods of time, up to 20 seconds uh, at a time. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you want a hatchback uh, and you also want an M car, this is the closest you can get. Uh, the One Series unfortunately isn't available in the US, but in the rest of the world it's quite popular because of its low price. In the M140i, uh, guys, uh, it gets quite expensive, but considering the performance it brings to the table, it's uh, actually a bargain. On the outside, uh, the One Series received, received a facelift last year, and when it uh, received the facelift, the M135i was still uh, being sold. This year, this summer actually, in July, they launched the new M140i, so it was a, a, around a year you could get the M135i in hatchback guys. Uh, now, these things are really, really fast. I've been driving the car for a couple of days now, and it's actually really hard to uh, restrain yourself. In this regard, the Eco Pro mode comes in handy because it numbs the acceleration and the steering. So, uh, even if you press the gas pedal a bit harder, uh, the car will be quite docile. On the other hand, even in comfort mode and in, especially in sport mode, just press the gas a bit harsher than normally you do and the car sprints ahead. Now, the thing is, Compared to the M2, for example, you can get uh, M performance models with X Drive, which will help out a lot of people that uh, live in uh, northern areas where they experience a lot of snow and so on. The M2 will handle snow quite okay as well, but it's better for your mind to know that you have X Drive to, X -Drive to rely on. With X Drive, the One Series 3 door, as I'm having. Uh, right now for testing purposes will reach 100 km an hour in 4.4 seconds now that is incredibly fast i need only to remind you that the dct equipped m2 does the same sprint in 4.3 seconds and the manual in 4.5 seconds so it's actually slower the car i have is a rear wheel drive model and it will do the same sprint in 4.6 seconds which is actually extremely fast as well get the power down. The thing is, having it, uh, having the uh, M140i without X-Drive makes the rear end really, 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 really skinny. Uh, the car, actually, I was driving it yesterday, uh, I, I mashed the, the throttle at about 80 kilometers an hour and my wheels started spinning. So, this thing has a lot of power on the rear axle. You need to be really, really careful with it when you're not having X-Drive. With X-Drive, you have more control over the car, it's more poised, but it's also heavier. 
the nose feels heavier um, and it might interfere with your driving. In this model, the rear wheel drive one, uh, it is absolutely a beach to drive. The nose is so light, you can actually pinpoint it wherever you want it to go. Uh, yeah, the steering doesn't offer a lot of feedback. That wasn't solved with the facelift. But you know where the wheels are, even though you don't feel it, you know where they are. Yeah, you need to adjust it sometimes just to make sure you're on the right path, but it's overall it's okay. It's not an M car after all. Uh, so yeah, the car the cars come fitted as standard with um, Michelin Pilot Super Sports that are basically the stickiest Michelin tires you can get unless you go for the cup tires and uh, them too are uh, at times are um, basically overwhelmed by the torque uh, of the car in terms of comfort uh, I can tell you that the M performance models like this one are considerably more comfortable than M models uh, stick it in comfort mode you'll be fine most of the time this car has 18 inch wheels and I'm not feeling any back pain after a, a longer trip uh, inside the cabin everything is uh, rather standard BMW stuff uh, get it, uh, the car comes with the M Sport package as standard so you get these nice nice uh, seats with Alcantara on the sides and that the blue hexagonal uh, stitching on the middle you get the brilliant uh, M Sport steering wheel which is absolutely marvelous uh, and everything is rather stuck now the one thing the, the one thing I need to mention is that starting this summer BMW started to equip all of its cars with uh, the new iDrive 5.0 system this is the new the new iDrive system that was introduced on the 7 series uh, and it is quite a step up now it takes a bit of time to get used to it uh, it doesn't have a touch screen response so the screen you can't actually operate it uh, by touching the screen but the iDrive controller is a, a, a much better and faster means to control your car. Uh, you have uh, six new sections, main sections on the screen. Uh, it goes from media to communication, navigation, connected drive, my vehicle, and then notification. All the menus have been restructured to be easier to use, and they are. Um, you can scroll through them a lot easier, find everything you need a lot easier. Now, in the first days, I did have a couple of issues with my Bluetooth connection. But uh, I don't know if it was from uh, from my phone or uh, if it was because of the car. In the meantime, it, it all worked uh, back together and it's all itself. The navigation app is also brilliant. It has new graphics. It moves faster. Uh, one uh, issue I have with the iDrive system, though, is the fact that when you enter the uh, My Vehicle uh, section, uh, a rather standard car appears on the screen. It, it's not adapted to your own personal car so for example this car is Valencia orange and it has the M Sport package but on the screen I see a standard silver BMW 1 series with a luxury package that's something that they could have addressed easily I think um, maybe not now that I think about it there are millions of combinations available so getting the car into your iDrive system could have been tricky yeah, it is a bit annoying. Maybe they should have done luxury sport and M sport uh, models, but they should have built them into the iDrive system, and that's it. Maybe not go for the paint and wheel combinations as well. Other than that, there's little I can complain about. Uh, it, the the buttons around the iDrive controller are also changed, so uh, it will take a bit of getting used to it. I don't like the fact that they, they removed the radio button. I used to actually use it quite a lot. Now you have media, a direct link to the map and a direct link to the navigation system. Kind of counterproductive if you if you ask me. And a button for communication which is the telephone. Um, but yeah, you get used to it after a while. Uh, it's no, no big issue. On the road the car is um, quite silent. Um, road noise is reduced to a minimum. Um, you don't hear a lot of wind noise through the apiers. The three-door uh, version doesn't have uh, has a frameless windows, so I expected it to be a bit noisier. But it turned out it, it's not the case. Uh, and uh, to be honest, I would go only for the three-door hatch if I had the choice. The five-door just doesn't look that good. 
that's just my opinion. Uh, the three door looks absolutely brilliant, and if you want a hot hatch, this is the car to go. The A series doesn't compare to it, especially the A45, just doesn't come close. The um, RS3 either. There isn't a better looking car in the segment with better performance at the moment. Not to mention you get the brilliant liter uh, petrol uh, engine that just sounds marvelous. Speaking of which, the new B50, B58 engine has different bore and stroke. So actually the cylinders are a bit taller and narrower, so the sound of the engine changed a bit. But if you ask me, change for the better. It's a bit louder right now, instead of uh, meteor as the old N55 was, and it sounds, sounds really, really good. I prefer the B58, but some might prefer the N55. Uh, it depends. So, overall, what can I tell you about the, the One Series? Well, I love how it drives. Uh, the M140i is blazingly fast. You need to be on your toes all the time. The DSC will intervene almost continuously if you keep it on. If you turn it off, you need to be really careful with the right foot, especially in the rain and uh, if the tires aren't heated up. Once you heat up the tires, you get better grip and the car just uh, handles brilliantly. No understeer whatsoever. A lot of oversteer, you can have a lot of fun. You can actually use your right foot to steer this car into a corner and out of it. Um, I totally recommend it, especially since the price is so low. It's cheaper than the two series, looks great comes with a lot of standard kit. This car I'm testing right now has a sticker price of 70, of uh, 57,000 uh, euros. Not dollars, euros. It's not available in the US. So for 57,000 euros, you get a lot of performance. Unfortunately, I don't have the complete list of optionals here, but I can tell you it doesn't have cruise control. And that's really annoying. It has adaptive LED headlamps heated seats, climate control, dual zone climate control and everything, but it doesn't have uh, adaptive cruise control or even normal cruise control, which is quite quite weird for a car that costs uh, 57,000 uh, dollars, euros, sorry about that. Uh, as far as fitting in the back goes, it's basically the same room as inside the 2 Series. Uh, as long as you're under 6 foot and the person in front of you is under 6 foot tall, uh, you'll fit in the back, no problem. Two people, three might be a stretch, maybe if they're children. The boot isn't isn't that generous either because of the differential on the rear axle. You get more space uh, in an uh, Audi, but less space in a Mercedes Benz, so it's kind of in the in the middle. So that was it for the BMW M4DI. I'm uh, waiting for your questions, and uh, I'll be glad to to answer.